Okay, now it says yeah, now up. we are. Now we're streaming on Facebook. Okay, yeah. let me put it on. Hi. 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 Now, hi, everyone. We started a few minutes. Okay, early. we are on. I just found it on. Now here. we're live. Yes. I'm still okay. dicking around with my lighting, trying to figure out, because I'm in a different room today. Okay, I'm so do I look at it from Zoom? If you, sorry, I should have asked this no, before we went you're on. You're going to end up with the <laughs> echo. I'm only hearing it on Zoom because I don't want to see hear the echo. Because if you do from both, mm -hmm. although you're going to be doing the comments, so you might want to just do it from um, Facebook. Okay. Or you're going to end up with an echo if you do it from both. That's the only downside of the Zoom slash Facebook thing right now. Okay. Are I people see coming? Comments. Yes. Hey, hey, y'all. Hi, Hi, everyone. So, so we are going to do our first ever mystery author chat. I don't know who's joining us, so this should be fun. I literally do not know who is about to join us. I have stayed off of social media all week long. And somebody is going to join us, and it should be fun. I don't know who I'm going to talk to for the next hour or so, and um, it'll be fun. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what I've gotten myself into. So, um, I just sent the invite. Megan knows who it is, and Amy knows, Amy who, knows it is. who it is, <laughs> but I don't know who it is, and nobody else knows who it is, so I'm still trying to figure out my lighting situation. I am having my reconstruction surgery on Monday, so I had to do a coronavirus test this past Tuesday and then go into isolation from everyone and everything, including in my own house. So I've been cooped up in my um, master bedroom, which is all fine and dandy. There's plenty of space here, but so I'm in a different part of my house this, this time for this live, but the lighting in here, I'm not familiar with it doing a, that's not bad there, right? The lighting, that's good. Yeah, you look good. It's not all shadowy for the first time. Uh, don't move. And the sun cannot oh. set or move this whole time. So, are so, you ready uh, to see our guest? I'm ready. Is everyone ready? Do we have Do we have participants I, with us? People we do. Attending? We do. All right. So we're going to bring in a third person, comments. and Megan's going to stay here with us and feed the comments makes it easier that way i don't have to do the earbuds and the, try to read the comments because that makes it yeah. really hard with the Zoom thing but so i'll try to never seen megan on live in person here she is yeah hi everyone hi i'm megan ashley you might see me posting in the group every day um i'm gonna try to catch all the questions and then our guests can answer them because usually we have a hard time seeing the questions right it is hard because you have to swipe left, so it's hard. Let me turn the volume off my phone. All right, let's see who we have. Okay. Ah, Gina. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for coming and doing this crazy bit. <laughs> you, know, I, you know I love live stuff. Oh and I wanted to, one, like, when they said we could be, that I could be your first guest, would my husband get out? I just got to fix the mic. <laughs> he just can't stand it. I was like, <laughs> he has to be in on fun. everything you do. He does. He is like my lighting guru and the sound, like he's always got all the things. Well, going. I'm pressing with my light here. Hi, William. <laughs> <laughs> she says hi to your fingers in the video. I am. Um... I miss my big hug from him though. I normally see you guys in person. It's been a while. I know. It's just been such a weird year, right? I have, um, I'm fussing with my lighting here because normally I do my lives from my office here in the house. But I was saying I'm in isolation because oh. I'm having surgery on Monday. And so I had to do oh. a COVID test on yeah. past Tuesday. And then they say, you have to go into isolation until you have your procedure done. Wow. And so 
I luckily have like a master suite, you know, with a bathroom and yeah. sitting area and stuff. And then I can go right to outside from there, you know, in the house. And yeah. so it's not like a hardship, you know, it's like plenty of space, but I'm not- But it is to weird that. to be like in the house, not with your people. I'll tell you, it's, it's been nice. <laughs> It's been nice. I'm just saying that because something happened like when I I walked through that door and I let go of the responsibility and I got exhausted just letting go of it all just in my mind. Yeah. Like giving myself permission to not have to be doing anything and not having to be taking care of Ivy and not having to be worrying about anything. I got exhausted immediately and I have been sleeping so much. That's you know what? That's like a an art form i can't do that i try i try so hard i try but dude even the last time i was sick i worked like i just i can't mentally i just i can't i don't know what is going on with this um exhaustion though i mean it's crazy like i wake up in the morning i feel good i'm doing good and around yeah. one o'clock rolls around and yeah I'm dead i mean dead like i it's crazy bad like two three hour naps <laughs> now like i will say this if you haven't if you haven't had a good blood test like to check your vitamin levels i was yeah. having that problem too and they were like um you have no iron you have no b and you have no d and i was like oh nifty that's fantastic and it was amazing once i started supplementing it was like oh right. hey and they're like, do you ever go outside? I'm like, I'm a vampire. Do you not yeah, see, do you this? see like, the color of my do skin? Do you see my skin? No, I never go outside. <laughs> no, I don't. Like all. ever. Yeah. So, so, well, again, thanks for coming and playing this crazy game with us. We're, I don't, I was in the shower where all good ideas are born. And <laughs> wouldn't that be fun to like, just do this crazy thing and I don't know, we'd have to talk some people into doing it with us, you know, or it's just like i think there was a game show like at some point in the 60s or something where there'd be a guest come on and they wouldn't know who it was you know behind the curtain till the end yeah they had to ask him questions you know so it was kind of like that idea but i oh is it um what's my line whose line is it anyway yeah yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like that but Yay. yeah so, so do we you need to flip over to facebook or we already did that. We did that before okay. we let you in the room. Oh, yeah. very cool. We're, we're still trying to figure all that Zoom stuff out. And See, we've been using Zoom for staff meetings for what, babe, a couple years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when everybody, when it Zoom suddenly got trendy, I was like, oh, hey, I'm ahead of the curve. Yay. Yeah, yeah. You're like, we are doing, um, we were doing, um, uh, not webinar, something David was WebEx? Doing, maybe that, something else. But then when Zoom kind of became the thing, we dropped that service because it was so expensive. It was like, so expensive. Why I used are to use we that not in my corporate life? Doing Zoom. This is so much cheaper. So I'm going to sure. figure this lighting out. Maybe if I just turn the light on. Hold on a sec. Sure. I'll turn the light on. Give it a whirl. Hi, Instead Megan. Of, Hi. How, how are you? <laughs> Me and Amy were very nervous today about how this was going to go with Zoom, and she told me that you're a Zoom expert. So if we had any issues to ask you, so well, <laughs> I'm so not far the so expert. good. <laughs> My husband is, but he's still hovering right here. Well, you guys oh, okay. do uh, you do a group thing every Wednesday. Yep, I catch it sometimes when you yeah, guys. We do Wine Wednesday every Wednesday night at um, nine Eastern, six Pacific. Um, it's just become like this fun thing for me. Fun. Like I look forward to that every week and we have such a great community and everybody's just so happy. And it's happy. interesting because when, even when we've had like really crappy days and we're like, yeah. I don't feel like taking a shower and I, you know, I don't, I don't feel like all the things. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we'll sit down and like, he'll flip on the lights and we'll sit down and turn it all on. And all of a sudden we see people and they come in and they'll say, you know, we really needed this too. And oh my gosh, it's been such a week and yada, yada. And then it's like, I don't know. I just, I kind of feel it all roll off. And I just am like, then like let's have fun. Everybody, it is. And I'm like, everybody just needs to like 
first of all, we all need to just chill the hell out a little right? bit. Right. Second of all, right. it's like it's, we got to have some fun in life. Yeah, there's some serious crap going on, but we have to have some fun. I'll tell you, there it's been this crazy like mix of there's a lot of serious stuff going on, but it's brought everybody back to like the basics where yeah. It's the, it's the family that matters. I have not yeah. spent this much time with my family, even though we live together and work together. Our son's um, girlfriend moved in with us oh, right wow. in the beginning of all of this. Yeah. So, so, and they work with us too. And so we are spending 24 hours a day together, the four of us. And it's been crazy, but we're loving it because what, a, what better a time to be doing that, you know, so. See, this isn't really new for us. And it's so funny because um, uh, somebody that I used to work with back in my corporate life, like forever ago, just posted on Facebook today. And she's like, I'm an introvert, but oh my gosh, I haven't left my apartment since like the end of February. And I'm like, dude, really? Like, yeah, it, 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 the cooties aren't going to jump on you. Right. Right. Like she right. hasn't even gone to the grocery store and she's like, I need stuff at the store so bad. No. And I'm like, you, you need to take care of you. Like you have right. to do that. And in the meantime, I'm thinking to myself, our lives just haven't changed that much. We always kind of had a grocery delivery or pickup right. thing going on. Right. We live and work together and have 24 seven since oh my gosh, it, five for me. Really? I, I think it's it's been eight years for us now. The dawn of time. The dawn of time. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you just can't stand it. You have yeah, to be okay. here. <laughs> yeah. um, Jess and, and will of have course, a chair. Just right? do it. You know you want to. He does, but he I has know. to go get pretty because we're going to go out to dinner. Oh, no, wait, I, no, we're fine. We're okay. good. Bye-bye. Right. Love you so, so much. You gotta mute the Facebook. Okay, yeah. Um, so in the meantime, my daughter, you know, they, they had, she went off to college, right? But it's really only 45 minutes away. So then when they said, okay, we're going to finish the semester online, it happened right over her spring break. And I said, pack up, honey, because I have a feeling you're not going you're back. You're not going back, yeah. And so she packed up a bunch of her stuff and we've gone back because it's actually an apartment. It's not a dorm or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not an on-campus apartment. It's an apartment. Right. So we've gone back periodically to check on her stuff. Sorry, my hair keeps getting twisted, my earbuds. Um, and so, you know, but she came home and other than our quick trips back, like that's it. It's been the three of us sitting in this house with the two cats. Right. And it's been actually nice. We sat down today, my daughter and I, and after I got some words in, like we took out a puzzle and started doing like, we both like puzzles, there but I couldn't remember the last time we'd done a puzzle. Do you know what medium is? Uh uh. That platform medium? Uh uh. So we'll have to talk about this offline or on Skype about what medium is. But on medium, then there's this other like sub platform called um, Slack Job. Okay. <laughs> but it's like the comedy side of medium. Okay. And they were talking about the stages of. Um, <laughs> the stages of being in um quarantine and one of them is working jigsaw puzzle oh, just... <laughs> i that's just too funny that you said that about a jigsaw puzzle because... and what's funnier is it's a puzzle i think we've had for a long time yeah. that she got like in school once upon a time that was like a puzzle of all the presidents or something yeah with a big American flag in the background yeah. and all this kind of thing. And I was like, you know, we, we were identifying faces and stuff. And then when he took it out, it was like some sort of weird puzzle. I've never seen like pieces that are this thin. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, what, who does this? Like, right. this is really strange. And then oh. we were like, you know, so we did it for a little while. And then we were like, well, you know, we're not going to get, so we also like reality TV. And I'm like, so we're not going to get, obviously, any Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team from CMT this summer because they couldn't probably do auditions. So we're right. just going to go watch a previous season. Oh, my God. Because that puzzle was frustrating. Oh, I don't have the attention span for that kind of thing. It's funny. Oh, I shouldn't because I 
like I I'm not crafty. I can't sew. I can't like needle pointing, crocheting, like all of that. It just makes but me you can want sing. to gouge my eyes out. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> all that crafty stuff makes me want to gouge my eyes yeah. out. So why I would have the patience to do a puzzle is really beyond me. I shouldn't normally. Yeah. So, I love I board know. games. I love board games too. And I'm the only one in my family and cards. Like I love cards. I like to play cards and, and board I'm the games. only one in my family who does. I can picture you being competitive. Oh, dude. I get that. Yeah. yeah it's I bad. That. But I get that from my dad. Yeah. He taught me to play, you know, every card game I know pretty much. And my grandmother. She I was... learned how to play cards from my dad too. He taught us how to play um, rummy. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's that. I remember. So my grandmother, when I was a kid, taught me how to play a progressive rummy game. And so there's six hands in it, and every hand you have to do something different. Hmm. And it's really interesting. If we ever get together again, I will yeah. teach you to play. I've taught yeah. like Lexi Blake knows how to play yeah. this game, was, and like a lot of my friends know how to play this game. Jenna Jacob played humanity this game. at this point because we've played that till till we're like blue. yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, and you know what? The last time we played that, um, I actually <laughs> we have a weird family. Um, I took it up to a family event and a whole bunch of us were whole horribly off know. color yeah the whole family is horribly yeah. off color my dad is 83 and he beat everyone oh, twice yeah, twice twice i was like dad I, I wish I could say I'm surprised but alas no no oh I love it that's so funny <sighs> oh how are the cats this is just like we're just gonna catch up and everyone else gets to i know just, everybody just gets to hear it um, anyone you know making what? comments at this point because <laughs> uh, yeah i can't see my facebook so if anybody's saying something i usually am looking at yeah. comments and then i just completely didn't this time so i apologize um megan's supposed to be watching the comments but i think I'm we're watching just, i'm watching yeah. but uh so far there's been lots of prayers and well wishes for your surgery oh yes a ton of you both are looking beautiful oh thank you and one person had a question do you want me to ask it now yeah go ahead go for it it says is there any possibility of co-authoring together us that's like a funny funny one i don't know i know i the, the funny thing about co-authoring at least for me is i i like to like see people in person and usually before i co-author with somebody like we get together for a good solid week and at least and think about what the how heck we're doing and how to plot yeah and especially if you're going to start a new series dude there's yeah. so much work that goes into that and nobody's seeing anybody really right now. And I, I don't know about you, I've seen people, but I don't know how I feel about traveling. That it is, it's scary. It's a scary like proposition right now. For sure. I, um, I would have to say too, I think I could say safely, my schedule is crazy booked writing wise I can only imagine what yours looks like so it's a lot and people keep asking particularly you know me and and Jen and Isabella when we're going to finish up Heavenly Rising because there's only one book left in the trilogy but oh, there's just so so much going on right yeah. now you so know, many other things that push it down so yep Isabella's life is crazy and plus in fact we live in three different states it's right. we're just still logistically trying to figure out how to make this work it, how's jenna's mom it's it's not good and i we had hoped god we had hoped but yeah. she called me from the hospital about three hours ago and said she had to step outside i mean the good news is that everybody got there in time to come say goodbye and the hospital totally bent the rules because they were supposed to have one visitor a day but the whole and family's been in really and out long life. and that's what i said to her i said you know what not everybody is privileged to have had as many happy wonderful years right. with your mom uh, you know yeah. and and she knows she's blessed and right. it's just but it's a hard time she and her sure. sister are um, really tight and they've been trying to reassure her mom that you know they're fine she doesn't have to worry right. about them anymore right. like right. they have the kids and the grandkids and everybody's gonna be okay so yeah oh. but thank you for asking she's well, let her know I was asking about her yeah she's just been 
as she's been trying to finish a book. So it's been really, really, really. It never comes at a good time. It never does. There is never a good time. So. No, I remember my dad having open heart surgery a few years ago, and I was right in the middle of a horrible deadline. And I had to call my editor and go, it's just not happening. And I don't, you know, if you want to cancel the contract, you do it. Right. Like I just, Fire I go for it. Yeah, go for it. Cause right now my, I'm an only yeah. child and my mom needs me. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, you yep. do what you need to do. And they were like, no, no, it's fine. Yeah. I, this, this whole entire year, you know, with what I've been dealing with, thank yeah. God for Waterhouse because they've been so gracious to me and just do what you need to do, get healthy. We're, we'll worry about books later. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. What do you So how do? is Ivy? Ivy's good. I mean, oh, she's good. good right now. She, she's, you know, gave us a couple crazy. Well, that last I had heard, she was that you guys were really worried about her. Yeah. And she pulled a little trick like your daughter. Oh, scared the crap out of me. Oh, scared I'm, me so and much. I have not, I haven't seen that happen in a while. And I, I, I was like doing the rescue breathing on the floor again. And I was like, why, are, why are we doing this now? I mean, why? Yeah. I don't, out of nowhere. I mean, she's, you know, full of tricks all the time, but so anyway. So yeah, my anyway, daughter that, had never even had one. So we were just like, what, what is yeah, this? She has them all the time, but they're kind of like these transient. So everyone's like, what are you talking about? My daughter had a seizure, a really bad seizure two weeks ago. Mm. Yeah. Two weeks ago. And she stops breathing when she has these bad ones. And it, it's very scary when you see yeah. your kid turn blue, turn you know, blue, mm -hmm. she turn blue. And then for some reason in the middle of it, she was still, you know, seizing, but she went <gasps> and she like reared back like that and took this big breath, thank God. And then, so she, you know, got some air moving, but she was still having the seizure and then went right back to blue again. And I was like, come on, you've got to breathe, Ivy, you've got to breathe. And I was talking to her, which of course mean, matters not, you know, and then she um, turned blue again. And then I was just going to breathe in her mouth. And then she, you know, relaxed and I was like, oh, thank God it was done. But yeah. It's scary. I mean, I, we were getting ready to go to the Terrifying. gym and I just, I mean, I was, and literally I have to, I have to give super shout out to our local fire department because between the time we called and the time they arrived was probably, I kid you not, like three minutes Good for them because she had just started to breathe again mm -hmm. when they hit the front door. And I was like, and she was upstairs passed out in her bedroom. Like she had no idea. And when she opened her eyes, it was like, her eyes were open, but she was she, yeah. Mm -mm, she had yeah. no idea. And in fact, the EMT started asking her questions. She knew her name and she knew where she was. She didn't get the year right the first time. She yeah. was like really confused. Yeah. And it was hard because we had to send her. I got to ride in the ambulance with her, but we had to send her into the ER by herself because she was an adult. Yeah. It's tough. We had a uh, uh hospital visit visit before that maybe a month before that and I was so afraid that they were not going to let me go in with her and of course uh. she's you know completely dependent and doesn't talk or any of these things and I thought what are they going to do she is an adult for sure she does you know she's defenseless and I thought what is it going to come down to me having to choose sending her in by herself and be defenseless and these people not know anything about her or me take push this and push this and push this at home and really risk her life because yeah i can't even like stomach the thought of taking her to the hospital and handing her over to people that don't know anything about her and her be defenseless in their care that's that's a dangerous situation too it was so dangerous on both sides and for sure i was hysterical and shayla for the first time in her 
almost 24 years, I lost my shit, which I have never done in a health crisis of hers. I literally like went to the ground crying hysterically in my kitchen because I did not know what to do. Yeah. I could not make a decision. I did not know what to do. And I was bawling. Yeah. I was oh, bawling. Yeah. I did not know what to do. And I, I can only imagine. No choice was a good one. And I called her doctor's office and I was saying to them, I don't know what to do. If I go to the hospital, do you, do you know, are they going to let me go in with her? I don't know. No, no. And the girl at the front desk, she said, well, maybe you can send her in with a note. No, 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 that's, that's not okay. And I hung up the phone and that's when I went to oh, the for ground sure. crying. And I was like, that's what her doctor just told me. Send her in with a note. No, mm -mm. I'm sorry. You know what? This is, and this is me being a little crazy maybe, but there's a part of me that's like, um, do, do you grasp that this situation is more dangerous than COVID? Like, so the, what the hospital that's right here that we go to now that she's aged out of the children's system is right, right. Loma Linda Medical. Yeah. And they're like world known, you know? Yes, so yes, yes. My they, grandfather um, went there. We pulled up. They actually had a guy in this like space suit. I'm not even kidding. He was like in this crazy space. Mm -hmm. He got in our car with us. in Because we have, you know, a... a it's a Ford Explorer, but it's converted with the wheelchair ramp and stuff. So he was able to walk in to the- Okay. Vehicle. He walked in back with her. He took her vitals. He did a quick assessment on her. And then he did the same assessment on me to make sure I was fine. And then he said, just pull around to the front. You have these stickers. You're welcome to go in with her. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, it was that easy. If the doctor's office had just told me- Told you that, yeah. It, it could have saved me all of that drama. I know, I oh, know. So. And, and the problem is, I just don't think that there's any, like, I, I feel so horrible. Like I have a friend whose daughter had a baby and she had to do it completely <laughs> by herself because yeah. they, wouldn't, they wouldn't even let her husband in there. And I'm like, you know what? I would have had a home birth at that point. I would have been like, screw it. Y'all keep this. But I'll... That's scary too. I don't oh, know. I, so on Monday, scary. I have to go do this myself, but they're allowed, oh, David can so come into the recovery. Real? Now that's, yeah. I, I'm surprised because I have another friend who's, um, she works in day surgery, but she does a lot of recovery patients, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of surgery yeah. toward the end of her shift. And she said that she had a pair of twins who were both having some sort of plastic surgery. I don't know, but we do everything together. No. <laughs> well, yeah, but apparently the mom was absolutely hysterical. Oh, they were kids. Yeah. I thought, well, they, they were 18 oh. and that was the problem. And the mom was just hysterical that she couldn't go back and she ended up sneaking in and getting arrested. It's like, really, you're going to arrest somebody for wanting to see their children. I mean, I get it. I know it's a regulation, but come on now. She just wanted to see her damn kids. Right. I maybe put off plastic surgery until later. There's a Although thought. mine is considered plastic surgery, but it's a little different when. Right. You no, know. but um, I think because the reason he's allowed in there is because he's caregiving when we come home and yeah. he has to hear all of the, you know, instructions and stuff. So. Right, right, right. I so mean, how are you feeling? I feel great. Good. I would. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, so far out of like treatment, I take tamoxifen every day, but that'll be for 10 years. And because I've been taking it a couple months now, the side effects have leveled off. And yeah, so that's it. I, I hope that I never, I don't ever want to like have to deal with any of that again. For sure. Yeah, so hopefully they'll be able to get the implant in the side that had to have the tissue expander taken out when it got infected and broke oh. through the skin. Oh. And then, um, because right now I don't have a tissue expander in that side, I have one expander in and one nothing. Yeah. And so they're hoping that they'll be able to get the implant in that the 
skin has remained like malleable enough and mm-hmm. stuff and that they'll be able because I'm not getting big breasts like they're just going to be the size they were before right so it should be okay hopefully we don't run into any unforeseen problems well I will cross my fingers yeah. and toes for you because yeah. I know that <sighs> from other friends that there's that you just want to get this part behind you. I want it. Yeah. This is the last step. And then, yeah. So, yeah. Girl, it's been a tough year for everybody. I'll tell you what, 2020 sucked a bag of dicks. Oh, hard, like hard. Right. Like a big bag. And I, I think back to the fact that we all celebrated the new year, like oh, it's a new decade, it's gonna be so great. And we're all like, oh dear God, please stop. I went off the merry-go-round. It seemed like 2019 was really shitty. And then 2020 rolled up and it was like, what? See, Can we 2019 get 2019 wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. But yeah, this year has just been mm-hmm. like, what the actual F? <laughs> we're so cheerful tonight. Well, you can't even, like, you just start thinking, you're like, I don't even know. Right? I don't even know. (laughs) And I I feel like people are, and I get it, people are so overwhelmed by everything, and there's less kindness out there than there really should be, and I, it, it hurts me to see people just being so actively unkind to each other because they can't agree on things, and I'm like, everyone is allowed to think whatever they want and like just walk away exactly it's not that difficult just when did that why are we getting it in an argument uh, right like go that way yeah you everybody get in your little corners until your yeah. tempers cool off there is really literally at this adult stage in life no reason to ever call somebody a name like there's just not yeah you don't have to engage just go go that way i don't know and, and the, there seems to be a propensity of people to be unable to just scroll past whatever they don't like. I was watching, like I watch a guy on YouTube and he's he literally has a channel dedicated to nothing but video games. And even, I mean, over a game, the things that people say, I'm like, dude, it's a game. Right. Like if you didn't like that playthrough, play it yourself or like, I, I, I just don't, don't like even have words. It's a that. game. <laughs> yeah, replay it. But like, oh, people. We could fight about everything. We could, and there's no point. So is that is that where you take freedom of this of speech has gone like off the deep end? You literally have the freedom to argue about everything. I guess, but on the other hand, then you have the people who are it. like, if you don't agree with me, then you don't exist. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that's sorry. Crazy too. Yeah. That's crazy too. I, I guess what? I got news for you. You can block me all you want. I still exist. I'm still sitting here. Hey. Oh my gosh. Yeah, go away. Oh, it's, I don't even know. The world's gone mad. The world has gone mad. Just gone mad. So, are we ready we... for another question yes <laughs> before we keep going down that path um there was lots of prayers for jenna ivy and again for victoria for your surgery so Thank everyone's you. really rooting for you shayla will we see another misadventures book from you for the youngest sister um so i i will eventually write that story i just i don't have a plan for when (laughs) because like you said the year is so incredibly booked um in fact like my next 18 months are pretty dang booked i am going to try to actually work it in to a charity anthology that i'm going to be participating in to try to get some um uh, to get some closure to that because i've been asked about echo's story before and it's something i want to do so that might end up being the right marriage of a place to put it because I have to, you know, I've already carved that time out and that's the only time that I could potentially work that in. So I'm going to be working on that. Do you keep a list of character names as you think of them? No, I have it in my head. Could you, 
not do that maybe i have to keep things. a list like as i come up with them i like or i hear something i add it to the list because well so what i have oh. is at, at this point where i'm 80 plus books in my career right i literally have a list of every hero Maybe i've cute. ever used every heroine's name i've ever yes. used and then i keep a small list at the bottom of names that i've heard or thought of or whatever that I might use later right. but sometimes it's born out of things like huh I I I've never like in my hero list I had I challenged myself to try to use a name from every letter of the alphabet <laughs> so sometimes it's like gee I don't have a Q name yet I'm gonna have to think about that you right know? right I don't know Quinn that's Boom. I think I ended up using Quint or something. I can't yeah. remember now. Yeah. Nice. All right, Megan, what else you got? How is Shayla's next release going? I loved More Than Dare You. Oh, uh, thank you. I think um, here, I, I even brought visuals for anybody who doesn't know because it just came out Tuesday. I still don't have my paper copies yet. Oh, isn't but that... I love how you always have the braids and the... Not always, but she's a braid in her hair, right? No, it's a curl. It's oh, so hard to see on my iPad. You always screen. have pretty hairstyles. I am. I have a sucker for hair, probably because I hate mine. So I like everybody else's hair. Um, <laughs> I know that's really random. I, um, but I'm really happy. You know, it's it was this book where I wanted it to be kind of a summary, feel good, you know, kind of fling leads to more sort of book and um I worry because I have this horrible propensity to then write some enormous conflict that I never foresaw and then we're off someplace deep and dark and <laughs> it happens to me a lot you so I was born right and so I I was happy when uh Trace and Macy took me places I didn't exactly expect but they did at least keep it on the light summary feel good side. It was like, yay, success. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's, uh, but you know how it is when your characters go, you wanted to go here and we're gonna go ee! I'm a two, I'm on the second to last chapter of a book and the whole thing went, whoa. And I'm like, oh, so close, why? Why now? Why, why now? I remember though writing a book, um, oh God, a long time ago. And I remember writing this book and about halfway through I had this plan and I'm like, I'm gonna do this because this makes like perfect logical, normal, like this is this is this'll work, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then I I had this weird thought in the back of my head as I approached that point. And I remember the thought being like, you could do that, or here's this other road that I didn't see before. And I remember at the time thinking, I'm just gonna tiptoe down that path. You know, it's a couple pages. If I don't like it, I'll erase it. And the next thing I looked up, it was like, literally I had written 40 pages in that direction, oh. like boom. Oh. And I ended up taking that direction and it changed an entire series. And I was like, well, that just happened. Alrighty. What book was it? Uh, it was, embrace me at dawn so that's how it was meant to be uh you know i guess and before people ask yes i'll finish the series someday i promise i was gonna say and wasn't there talk recently about that really happening well i'm i'm really i've i've literally gone to the point where i hired an attorney because i it's publishers are dicks let's just say that some are Right, some are, some aren't. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. but <sighs> yeah, it's Is when that it comes the only to paranormal you've ever written. Is that I mean that series? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Is that like something you'd love to just get really into, or um, you know, it was it was something I wanted to do. I have this weird thing. I mean, it certainly has the still contemporary romance element in it with the romance. Yeah. 
I, and I wanted, I always wanted that paranormal world to be accessible because I, I noticed that I'm the kind of paranormal reader that I always like it when there's some human girl in there just because I relate better. It doesn't always work out that way in a series, but at least I think as a series starter, it's nice to, you know, see if you can insert some human and girl in there I and, and like jump that. off like that. You like to fantasize that that's you. I mean, who didn't want to be Bella Swan? Well, here's the other thing. I also feel like when you're going to introduce a world, if you introduce it from the perspective of a character who's already lived in that world, it's much harder to orient people because you don't have to explain the world to the person right. who's always lived in it. Right. So any explanation to the person who's lived there their whole life, it just comes off as being disingenuous and right. ridiculous. Right. But right. you insert the human girl in there who doesn't know anything Very and then all the explanations make sense. Very smart. So that was always my thing. And I, you know, I, I enjoyed doing that series and and I'm just that kind of person who likes extra challenge. Yeah. I mean, it's the same reason that I, you know, I started writing, originally I wrote historicals and then I jumped to contemporaries for a challenge. And then I jumped to erotic for a challenge. I, you know, I've written Minaj for a challenge. I've written paranormal. I like, I just like to challenge myself. Right. Um, and then some things just know. feel better than other. Writing historicals. I don't know. I know. Oh, I wrote nine of them. I know but two will remain buried under my bed forever. 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 I have the rights back to them. They're just sitting on my hard drive. Like yeah. it's not happening. Yeah. It's no, I would have to rewrite it. And honestly, it's not worth it. Yeah. I thought I saw something moving out there. <laughs> You're like, what? But I live backed up to wilderness. So it wouldn't be uh, heard of. And so I was like, What's There's that? people walking up and down my street. It's finally because, you know, in Texas and it's still 88 degrees right now. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so uh, people are trying to get outside and like walk and ride bikes yeah. and all that. I'm like, dude, it's still so deathly hot and humid. But Forget the humidity, it. humidity, yeah. Yeah, no. Pass. Yuck. So what else do you have going on? What's coming up after that one? Um, the I'm working right now on my um, 1001 Dark Nights project for the year. So it's going to be another More Than Words novella. This will be called More Than Protect You. Um, and it's out October 6th. So I'm wrapping that up right now. Nice. And then I'm going to jump back into my Wicked and Devoted World. So if people aren't familiar, this is the first book in that series. See, I keep these things handy. I know. And it was a duet. I don't have the second book to the duet here. Sorry. Um, but I have, they're all going to be duets. So now I have to jump into the next couple. So um, I get to start working on Zion Tess, which will be super interesting. I feel like I've written this rash of single parents lately and she's another one. I'm like, this is my third single parent in a row. What am I doing? You're like a Disney. I know, I'm starting to feel like that. It's like, what's with all the single parents all of a sudden? Oh, I've never had any. Dead. Yeah. And all of a sudden now I've written three in a row. I'm like, what? What am I doing? And right they're now? all tiebacks to Wicked Lovers. Yeah, Wicked and Devoted. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also working um, on my off time for fun. I'm also working on more forbidden confessions nice. so i did four of them earlier this year um and then i put them all into one print volume but um you know they're just fun little twenty thousand word novellas with you know they're just short quick hot yeah which is Who's just doing kind your of... covers they're so good rachel my assistant yeah. <laughs> she rachel. taught herself photoshop like she's like um hang on a hot minute let me you figure this out see what i can do yeah it's like you you go off and you do that. But now we oh I I'm getting a new hairdo. Lord, I can't stand this anymore. Um, <laughs> can't handle it. Uh, we do a lot of collaborating on the elements that go into it, um, and then she'll give me a draft and I'll play with it. You know, she'll send it to me and I'll be like, do this and do that. And you know, the, one of the other great things about Zoom is screen sharing. Right. So she'll share her screen with me and we'll sit there and talk about it for a hot minute and she'll run off and do a few more things and yeah. 
Nice. But mostly it's Rachel being awesome. <sighs> Which she makes look easy. She does, because she's just so generally awesome anyway. So <laughs> I I feel Thank like you, Rachel fan club. I know. I feel like I it was so funny because she came to me from another friend who um really isn't writing anymore but uh, she she's not too much personal life but you know this friend called me and I had just my assistant had just quit she had too many health problems and there was just and her husband had health problems and there was just like a big giant cluster and she was like um so I know you don't have an assistant and I have an assistant I don't need anymore why don't you guys talk and I remember getting on the phone with her and I was like for about an hour is like, I am going to inundate and probably ruin your life because not that I'm super high maintenance, but I'm so far behind at this point. Right. It's like you will spend a year crawling out of this hole. And she was like, no, it's good. I'm fine. Okay. And she was, she was. Yeah. 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 She's been with me now since God, six seven years 2011 at least no it was after that um no because as long as i've known you no because that was my old assistant um she came to me in fact the first trip she took with me was one of the last raws that laura lee did hmm. and i want to say it was like 2013 because it was <laughs> after my Fair. husband in New Orleans, the first time I met you. That was 2012. Uh, Rachel was there. Oh, I thought I hired her in 2013, but she's been with me a long time. I don't know. She's been I with me a long Lisa time. Lisa was there and they met. Who's that? Elisa, my friend Elisa. Ah, uh, okay. They were, anyway, <laughs> this is getting crazy. I know, it's always crazy. Do you have more questions? Yeah, do we have I more feel questions? like we're just sitting here I talking do. about stuff. So do you prefer to write solo or in collaboration? What's easier or harder? That must be you. Um, it depends. You know, I'm... I'm so extroverted that sometimes the solo thing wears on me. And it's one of the things I like about collaborating because it, if I'm doing collaborating in my preferred way, like I'm on Zoom all day and we're writing like talking, writing, you know, kind of, it, it's, it's a true collaborative thing. And then you know, at the end of the four or five month process, we're all like, okay, I love you so much. Now, please go to your corner so I can Don't have ever some talk to me again. Yeah, for at least for another year or so, because it does get, you know, but at first it's like, oh, I'm so excited. I don't have to like work by myself all day long. Yay. When I first started doing something by myself, I was like, I'm so lonely. It's weird <laughs> at first. I do this. Like I really didn't know how to do it myself because I had only worked with Angel. So I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do it myself. I, I felt like I was missing that constant feedback. So I felt lost. You know, I, I, I needed that feedback all the time and it wasn't there. So I, I felt dependent on that, you know, having that feedback. Right. Like, is this good? Do you think this is good? It almost felt like it was a bad thing, you know? Well, and there's also that moment, because I still do that. I mean, I've, I've been doing this professionally since 1998, but there's always that thing where it's like, I know what I meant, but I don't know if anybody else knows right, what I meant. Right. Like, is this super clear? Is it's this really? Yeah. Because there are sometimes, especially when you feel like you should be slightly oblique about something so you're not hitting people over the head right. but then you're like is it too oblique like I hate stuff like that it just it drives me crazy because I'll wonder myself to death about stuff like that right 
but yeah, I want I want immediate feedback. I don't want to send it out to an email and then wait for an answer back. And I know. Because I, I, we're in the age of constant, I mean, not constant, immediate, you know. Gratification, like you want yeah. to know all the things right I now. Need to answer. I need to answer now. I know. You know. And that's the other thing. I honestly sit, um, so I have a sprint loop that I have people I sprint with on Zoom. And um sometimes it's like in between sprints, somebody will go, here's a paragraph. Does this make any sense? Like even a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. you can tell when somebody hasn't had their coffee, like I'm not a coffee drinker, but I can tell when some of my friends haven't had their coffee and I'm like, nope. Mm -mm. So that is, um, Zoom has text too, not just video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. You can, so we've just created a group where, you know, usually, I usually have my timer because I have, I use a yeah. app that's supposed to be like brain concentration stuff. Right. So right. binaural, is that what you, do you do those? What's, what's that? Beat, binaural beats. No, mine is brain FM or something, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I'll say, okay, I'm setting the timer for an hour, go, you know, everybody will drop whatever their starting point is, you know how it works. And then at the end, yeah. There will always be somebody, it seems like, who's like, oh, I'm in the middle of this scene and it's really just driving me absolutely crazy. What do I, like, does this make any sense? And sometimes it's like, oh yeah, great, no more. I Like I would read this and sometimes it's like, mm -mm. nope, back that up. <laughs> it's good. It's like peer, um, peer review right on the spot. It is. I mean, and we try not to take too much time between sprints because I know some people like get off sprint groups because they're like, there's too much chatter. Right, right. So I, I try really hard to be like, but it's funny because all four of us on this loop are extroverts. So we have to kind of go, okay, we have to stop now. Like we yeah, really no more have squirrels. to yes, stop. All right. What else, Megan? Any, any more? Yes. How is Shark's Edge going, Miss Victoria Blue? It's going right up the ocean blue. No, it's going. It's going really well, actually. I'm about to finish that fifth book finally that I'm so happy to say that because it's been you know on hold for so long while I take care of my health so thank goodness what you gotta do thank goodness for grant I know and I appreciate everybody's patience while I while I did that and understanding because I had to do that I mean it had to happen I, I had to I had to you know go get yeah, some. and that's the thing you know like we're we're people too and yeah. when shit happens shit happens i've read some really nasty not not for me but i've read with other authors and really nasty readers, really nasty really nasty readers to some sick authors and yeah. authors that were injured in accidents and i mean i i just couldn't even believe it and i thought how grateful i am for the group for of sure that I have and the support that this community has showed me because uh, these people were vicious. And I thought, thank God for these women that have been so supportive and so kind while I have dealt with this cancer because y'all don't even know what this has been like. It, it's, oh. it's been terrible. I mean, it yeah. doesn't seem like, oh, it's, it's, you know, not that big of a deal or whatever people survive can breast cancer all the time or uh but some people don't so it is a big deal and a lot of people don't but it's such an emotional journey oh, for like, sure it's crazy and the hormones and what it oh. does to your family and it just it, it just i i don't even i'm not going to start crying or any of that stuff and mm. i've got one more phase to deal with here to on monday you know, and then recovery from that. It is right. another surgery. So I've got another probably four weeks in bed, you know, dealing with <laughs> all that. <laughs> but you do what but, you got to do. And yeah, we're going to get through it. And, and all yeah. I keep focusing on is this is the last step of it. And then I'm going to put it all behind me. So yeah, I'm well, and, and I've, I've felt a lot the same. Like anytime I've had to put a book off, I've never, I've just said, look, like, and, and I think a lot of it is about communication, though. The, most mm -hmm. of the most vicious things I've seen are people who feel like they just don't have any information at all. 
Right. And they're just, they're out there going, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know whether it's not out there for the having or they're just not looking in the right place. Like, I don't know. It's hard but, too, though because it's personal, you know, and it took me a while once I found out to go public with it because A, I wasn't ready. B, it involved my family too. Sure. You know? And we needed to know what we were dealing with exactly. We needed to know how we were going to deal with it. And this is a lot of pieces to a puzzle that you don't really know. Mm -hmm. you, know? you don't always know. And so it, it may be easier to say, we, we didn't have the information. That's why we were angry. I'm just- But I don't think <laughs> you have to tell people exactly why. I mean, like in one person, uh, in one case I know of in particular, she just hasn't said anything to her fans in like three years. And they're like, just tell yeah. us something. And she has not right. said anything. And I think- Yeah, three years is a long time. Is a long yeah. time. And I think that those people, you know, were particularly upset that it has been so long without any communication it, at all. The same author, it was like 12 books in. It was a yeah. really long, it was a deep series. Yeah. And boof, nothing. And but you know what? I I remember it, it's it happens that way. I remember back in the day there was a series I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved, and she never wrote the last book ever. Ever. The last one? The last one. And it's been probably 15 years. Was it like the, you know, that thing with who will I marry when I can? Yeah, you wonder, right? Yeah. Uh, it That's just, how you had to decide who it was. Yeah, at this point, I was like, I'm making it up in my head because this book is never I'm coming. I'm writing the last book. Oh but I feel God. like fortunate, and I'm, I'm glad that you've had the same experience. When I've told people, even if I've just said I'm not feeling well or <laughs> there's stuff happening, like I'll get back to you, but they've been just incredibly generous and sweet and lovely and... Yeah, I feel very lucky. There's some great people in Booklandia. I mean, you, you tend to hear about the drama, but honestly, I, I think there are so much, there are so many more awesome, wonderful people in yeah. Romancelandia than there are the drama mavens. Yeah, it who... eclipses the, the, the garbage, the dumpster fires, you know. But I literally have just just a no drama policy in my group like if you're a it's pot same, stir same our page. we don't do that mm -mm. i don't have we patience all, or time for pot stirs yep you're out if you want to act like that I yep don't, and thankfully that. in all the years i've been running my group i've only had to ask one person to leave and it was i i had no personal problem with her but she she said something to somebody else that um was a little over the line and i was like yeah i'm not gonna i don't think it's not okay to remove anybody it's we're just a happy place that's it's awesome all happy at all. this was like so early on um yeah. I, the group that i have now actually a fan started a long time ago so it was just at the point at which i took it over from her because she ended up deciding that she wanted to go get a full-time job and didn't have time anymore which totally get it totally respect it that's fine and I thought well I can either let it die or I can just you know try to do right. something with it so I did um but in the change of rules and in the change of environment and then the change of the way things were running that was the only hiccup that we've ever had so I I I'm fortunate I feel fortunate Miss Megan, any more? Yes, there's another one. I really like this one. Kelly says, I love writing reviews. How important would you say leaving them is for you as an author? Shayla, you want to answer that? Um, so this is an interesting question. And I love them. I, I love when people take the time to do it. But I, I have to say two things. Um, I got advice a long, long, long time ago not to read them. So I try really hard not to because I don't want to be influenced. I can't 
change my voice to suit a review. Like, it's not that I don't care that you took the time to do it. And I know some people have been upset that they feel like when the author won't read it, that what they're saying in their refusal to read it is that you don't care. And that's not it at all. It's just that it's literally the kind of thing where this person can say, oh my gosh, Jane was the best heroine ever. Like the heroine of the century. I loved her so much. You know, I, I want her to be my sister and my best friend and my maid of honor go. <laughs> and you can five minutes later have another person say, Jane was horrific and horrible and I hated everything about her. What a too stupid to live twit. Like, doormat. And, and yeah, and doormat, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. blah. And when you read those two reviews, like it doesn't do anything in your head except make you go, yeah. It, you can't, Jane was who she was when you put her on the page for a reason. She can't be a different person to you. So reading that, just it does nothing but make you go, and I suck and I'm never writing another word. So I, I got that advice early on to not really read my reviews. <clears throat> there are some people that I know um, who will come to me or say, hey, the review is out and there are people that I know and try, but like Good Reeve is just the dumpster fire of the romance world and I, mm -mm, nope. But I appreciate all of the reviews because I know it does help other people discover authors. I know it helps the Amazon algorithm. Like I, I genuinely appreciate people taking the time to do it. I just try really hard personally not to let myself be too swayed by Jane is awesome. Jane is a twit. Definitely. I like when people review the books because it gives me feedback that people are consuming the work that I did. For sure. So in numbers, I mean, you see sales numbers to a point when you're with a publisher, but you don't see all of them. And no, then, that's true. I think um, I agree with what you're saying. I would never change something I wrote based on a review ever, ever. Because that's that wouldn't be being true to like who you are as an artist. Process. Yeah. So. I and I've literally seen reviews that say things like, this was so well written and well thought out and not kidding, same book, you know, sure. a day later, it's like, Someone this else. was so sure. stupid and what a ridiculous, like, what do you yeah. do with that? Like, yeah. there's just nothing to do with that. I do get frustrated with reviews that attack authors personally and do not comment on writing technique or 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 the story ability or exactly or like story structure or anything to do mm -mm. and that they're just getting at the author that's not what a review is for that or or my least that. favorite my yeah. least favorite is i bought this book and then the file didn't deliver properly. I contacted Amazon one and until star. one star. So until somebody at Amazon fixes this one star, well, the author has nothing to do with it. If we delivered the file to Amazon, what they do with it after that, we can't change it. We can't or fix it. We can't. It's I, frustrating. I see that this author is just trying to make money and is you know, trying to soak me for another book. Well, it said it was a series. Well, and, and I had some people ask me why when I started uh, one Wicked. One star, okay. Yeah, when I started Wicked and Devoted, why are they duets? Because uh, I can't write a series of 150,000 plus word or books. I it's could, not... but then there'd be complaints about a $20 book. Right. Plus, it just, from a scheduling perspective, I needed to split it up. I couldn't, that was five and a half months of my life. I can't, right. I, you know, five and a half months of my life for $4.99 isn't going to work. I'm, you know, right. yes, we have to make money too. It's a sad state of life, but it is what it is. Yeah. So, yes, re I, li I actually like reading reviews. 
I like when they're all nice and happy. I like reading reviews that have constructive criticism in them. I don't like reading reviews that are nasty for no apparent reason, just for sure. Somebody got up in a bad mood. Ah, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> well, or, or like I had, I had one not that long ago that was like, I would have given her, and it's not a bad review, but it was like, I would have given her five, but she got the baby's age mixed up. And, you know, the baby was this old in this book and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, 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 mm -mm. I have a Bible. I have a timeline. You are incorrect. This person was pregnant when the baby was born, not had a newborn when the baby was like mm -mm, yeah. you're wrong I hate to tell you that but you're absolutely wrong and I have like charts and maps and like I literally have two people who take care of all of that for me somebody just slay me saying clearly you have never even stepped foot in San Diego I'm like I lived in San Diego for 15 fucking years don't you tell me don't you tell me yeah they're like you and they're saying all this stuff I got wrong Everything they said, they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything, they were wrong. Mm -hmm. like, but there's nothing you can do about that. No. There's nothing. I am not going to be that author that gets on there and no, that no. But mm -mm. they were wrong. They were wrong about every single thing. And I was like, wow. But again, it falls yeah. under the everyone's entitled to their opinion. And yeah. I just, I walk away. It's like, it That's is what it is. That's the same thing about, well, anybody that reads this and who has been to or live in San Diego or has Google and can look up all this stuff this person is right. blowing smoke out of their ass about, we'll see that they're wrong. Right. And And for most people, in all honesty, unless you like, live in a place like i don't know about you but every time i've somebody's written about a book in i'm trying to think of a place i've never been cincinnati okay i'll take your word for it i really don't care if you're wrong i've never been there right. if right. you tell me a good story the rest of it is like whatever i would never tell a story in detail like i do in about san diego if i hadn't lived there you know what i mean like I wouldn't say those things in such particular detail about street names and places and because I live there, I wouldn't say that. Right. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Yeah. Because that's just asking for trouble. Yeah. So I, I don't know. But, you know, who knows? People say these things and, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure that they're passionate when they say it and, and maybe they once lived there and it used to be like that or who knows, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> and saying you'd give a book three and a half stars. That doesn't matter. It's still a three. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see people do that. I, and then in the comments, they say three and a half stars. Yes. It's a three. Yeah. Cause three. Amazon doesn't allow have yeah. anything and then i i love the other comments which are things like why are the novellas in the series not numbered because amazon won't let me or when you have multiple publishers over the same series why aren't they all listed because amazon won't let me right you know it's it's not that i don't want to help you it's all on my website if you'd like to look but right. amazon won't let me like right. literally that's how it is. Yep, it is. It to be different, but it's not. Yep, you are correct about that. <laughs> uh, Anything else, Megan? There's another question. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Of course. Um, we love what is your? Can't you tell? <laughs> what is your favorite snack to eat or drink while writing? I know your answer. <laughs> M&M's? No, they're uh, gobstoppers. Oh. Uh, um, you know, other than I'm just a horrible Coke Zero addict, um, I don't usually eat. I don't, I don't usually have food around here unless I'm like eating a meal at my desk. But the, tonight's um, intake is uh, Gatorade. 
It looked like Hawaiian punch before. It's Gatorade. <laughs> nice. I like vitamin water. I like vitamin water too. Um, I, I drink a lot of Crystal Light. Like anything that's fruit punchy, I will drink the hell out of that. Nice. Nice. Oh, I am so glad that you came for our first beauty pick. You know, it's so funny because I was thinking um, when I, I was first approached to do this, I was like, this will be kind of nice because I, I just feel like we haven't, the last few events we went to anyway, you, you know how we always are like ships passing in the yeah. night, you know, I have to be here Let's and you have to be her. there. Let's we'll get we'll meet in the bar yeah. some point and then it never happens because, you know, your, your first responsibility when you're there is readers yep. not not your you know personal relationships you have any business time you're doing stuff with your publisher and yeah or and or your agent or yeah we always sit by each other at a signing because of our last name yeah so we'll see each other and then i was thinking we haven't like thrown things at each other in a while it's there was that wild. one signing a while ago we were throwing m ms or something at each other but it seems like now it's been what a solid year that mm -hmm. we've done a signing. Yeah, right? and we, everything that I had this year got canceled. Got canceled. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what didn't get canceled in the beginning? Like, no. The did you do Vegas? Were you at the um, at Ellie's event in Vegas? Mm, not last year. I was scheduled to go to the one this year. So now I'll be going in 2022. Yeah, she was smart to do that. So there will be no signings next year either? Probably not, huh? Um, there are some scheduled right now, but I'm, and, and this, is, this is the thing that we've talked about in the book beauties a lot, because I have some people who are hardcore signing fans, love to go to events like all the time. And it's the same conversation we've had. What does it look like? I mean, what does that really look like? Because so many of us are huggers. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. You know, you, you stand up and take a picture with somebody and you, you know, stand next to them and yeah. put your arm around them. That's kind of a problem. You pass things back and forth. That's you kind of a problem. You have to fly to get there. I mean, all of those things are just problems. And I don't know. It's a heavy contact sport, book signing. It absolutely is. And it's mm -hmm. probably one reason yeah. why I was in the process of scaling back anyway, my immune system just won't, cause I don't sleep well. So those four or five day events where by day five, I think I've slept 10 hours in five days. Like right. I'm exhausted. I don't feel good. You never eat good. Cause there's never any place to eat no. it, Like it's, it's hard. No, it's energy shots and coffee the whole mm -hmm. time. It's, it's a lot. And after a couple of them in 2017 and 18, where I came home and I was sick, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, I had one that I came home and I was sick for a month. Yeah. And I was like, I, I have to stop doing this. So like packing a suitcase every three weeks. I can do it a couple times a year, but. I had um, five signings scheduled for 20 I want to say 2020, but I don't know if it was that or 2019. It must have been 2020 because of all the shark books that were supposed to come out. Right. But then cancer and then COVID. COVID, yeah. And, so, and then, you know, book schedule completely changed. Yeah. And so it was strange to actually be grateful that things were canceled because I didn't have to cancel them. Right. Because when I first had to start canceling things myself, I felt terrible. Because it's a horrible feeling. I don't like going back on my word as a person. And so canceling events, I felt terrible. I yep. felt so bad. Because you were letting the event organizer down. Yep. And yep. then you know, just everyone else involved. It just, it's a terrible feeling. And so I had, um, I had um, Guy Warren's thing that it was all business. Mastermind. I, I had to cancel out on that. And I, I was bummed because I really wanted to go to. Oh, that. it's, I've gone to all of them. They're amazing. I was so disappointed. And um, 
and it was a lot of money you know the yeah. everything to fly there and the hotel and the yeah itself and everything and that was the second event because of the cancer I had to cancel and then after that I think COVID happened. COVID yeah I had four events scheduled for this year and um you know just one by one by one and I think when I th- this all started you know when people were really starting to lock down in March I think I had some vague hope that maybe by October yeah. We would have figured out at least how to work around it a right. little bit. Right. Or but, maybe we thought the summer would lighten up and maybe if it swung back in the winter, we'd miss those. But yeah, but uh, yeah, no. So, uh, and it's hard because everybody's, and this is something I think that we're running into in general, everyone's tolerance, risk tolerance is different. Yeah. And, and everybody has their reasons for their right. risk tolerance and right. what it is depending on their health and their family situation right. and, and just their general overall, you know, mood. My right. mom is a real estate agent. She's 72 and she sees people all day, all the time. They never slow down. And she's like, but she's at the point in her life where she's like, I've lived a good long life. You know, if, yep. if something happens, it is what it is. Yep. But she probably has the strongest immune system going. She does. I'm like, she gosh, darn it. Among the people. Her yep. Whole- yep. So she's like, you know, gold plated at this point. At this point. But I've been worried about my dad, who's, you know, 84 now. Yeah. And, um, you know, him, her coming and going every day, yeah. all day. Um, and he's had open heart surgery and, you know, like I've been worried, but he's just like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, you know, at, th- at some point, and I get what sh- my mother's saying at some point you kind of get fatalistic. It is what it is. Right. Right. Which I yeah. know sounds flip it to some people and I don't mean it that way, but it- it's not like anybody asked for COVID. Right. So it's like you're saying, we all have to decide what your level is of what you're going to tolerate. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So we're going to get your links put up for what you have going on. Very cool. Uh, coming out release wise, we'll get your reader group link put up. So if any of my people aren't already in your group, they can come join you. That'd be awesome. I always welcome new fun people and yeah we'll be and around thank you to megan for over there for reading questions and sitting quietly and yeah <laughs> she's listening probably like what are these people talking about just shut up now oh my gosh <laughs> no it's funny because i was watching it on facebook so i can't i see the screen is different than what i'm hearing you know so the yeah. whole time i've just been like whoa and then i realized i could split the screen like i'm not even helps. stoned and this is true <laughs> <laughs> which helps so much and I figured that out at the end so now I can see both of you talking and see the screen so we can awesome. go back both of us and answer yeah. comments or questions that we missed we only missed a few okay, okay. there was awesome. just a few awesome yeah well thank you very much for inviting me to for coming come be with you this evening and I'm going to wish you all the best of luck on Monday. Thank you. I'm sure it'll go just fine. Well, I, I hope so. And I hope like there's a place to keep up with you so I can find yeah. out. David usually posts either something in the group or he'll message Megan and she posts something out there. Awesome. For the group to see, so. I will be on the lookout for that and thinking all the good thoughts for you, dear. I appreciate it. No, you're welcome. Have a good one. Happy Saturday, everybody. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.